So starting in section 11.2, and here we're looking at integrating <coughs> things of this form. So we've got our list here, anything that looks like this we can integrate. Now what if instead of an x, I've got a linear expression in x? It's not just an x, it's an ax plus b. <coughs> so for example, if I'm trying to integrate cos of 2x plus 3, well, the way that we deal with that is like this. I know that the, the way that we deal with all integration really is what did we have to differentiate to get to here? Okay, that's the way we think of integration. So to get a cos, I must have started with something like a sine. Okay, so we would say, consider the derivative of sine of 2x plus 3. And you'll notice I've left a nice big gap in the front here, and that's because I'm going to need that in a minute. Well, the derivative of sine of 2x plus 3 is cos of 2x plus 3 times 2. Now, if you're not happy with why that is, go back and practice chapter 9, right? This is a chain rule question. We need to be able to do those smoothly. Uh, integration is, is using differentiation backwards, so we need to be able to, literally, we need to be able to do differentiation backwards before we're ready for this chapter. But sine differentiates to cos. So sine of 2x plus 3 differentiates to cos of 2x plus 3 times the derivative of the bracket, which is times by 2, okay? So the derivative of that is that. Well, we want a function whose derivative is cos of 2x plus 3. Sine of 2x plus 3 is so close, there's just a 2 in, in the front of it, which is a shame, isn't it? Well, what if I'd started by differentiating a half sine 2x plus 3. So well, if I differentiated that, I would have got this times by that half, wouldn't I? Because that's just a constant in front. So the derivative of that is that, and here, look, oh, the 2's cancel out. So that's why I picked a half to go in front. I picked a half to go in front because I knew that after the differentiation, the half would still be in front, and it would clear this 2 out, and I'd be left with cos of 2x plus 3. So the way that I like to do these is whatever's in the integral sign, I think, well, what would that have come from? So uh, let's take the next, uh, another example. Sec squared of 3x with respect to x. I think, ah, well, sec squared, that came from something like a tan, right? So I think about tan of 3x. I think about the derivative of tan of 3x. And the derivative of tan of 3x is sec squared. 3x times by 3. And then I need to fix this 3. So if I, instead of differentiating tan of 3x, I differentiated one third of tan 3x, then I would get one third of sec squared 3x. The 3s would cancel out, and the derivative of that thing in the brackets is this thing here. That's the way I like to do it. Think of um, what have you got? What could it have come from? All right. Now, after you've done a few of these, you'll find that actually, if there's a linear term, what we have to do is just cos integrates to sine and then divide by the coefficient of the x. All right, and that trick will always work. And if you do a few, I, I really recommend that you at least do a few like this. If you don't, uh, you know, I, I used to insist that my classes stick with this method right up to the exam. Uh, I'm not sure many people did, but I, I like to think these things through personally. If you don't stick with it forever, then at least stick with it for a while. Um, and when this fact that you just divide through by that 2 becomes obvious, then switch to this method. Don't forget, of course, constant of integration. So sec cubed of 3x, well, sec integrates to tan. So instead of sec squared 3x, we get tan 3x, and then we divide by the coefficient of the x. Don't forget your constant of integration. Okay? Um, <clears throat> And that's really it. Example four in the book just does another couple of examples that work exactly the same way. Um, so, good luck with section 11.2.